Uh, so on the screen it shows there's a, a, a model of um, covalent compound. It is actually the table sugar molecule. Table sugar molecule. There are many, many atoms, about 30, 34, 35 atoms in this molecule. You can see the black one is the carbon, red is oxygen, and just a little balls are the uh, hydrogen atoms. So there's quite a few hydrogen atoms in this formula. It's all covalent compound. So in this, in this chapter, we'll be go over uh, what is the nature of the covalent bonding, and then the naming of a covalent compound. Nomenclature is naming of the of covalent compound. It is completely different system from the ionic. And so um, it is one of my concerns that if I bring this num uh, nomenclature of covalent compound, it might confuse you when you get to the uh, last chapter naming. Yep, it can be a little confusing. So you just keep your eyes open and uh, look for uh, if the compound is, is between the metal or non-metal or between non-metal and non-metal, okay. The compound between non-metal atoms, non-metal atoms, those are the uh, covalent compound. And we have uh, their own system to name that. And then the, the actual covalent bonding model theory, it is a Lewis structure theory about it. Uh, how the non-metal atoms share electron to become noble gas configuration. And uh, once we know the Lewis structure, we can actually further predict the shape of the molecule. Uh, the shape of the molecule is very important because, uh, so for example, uh, the taste and smell has a lot to do with the atom and also the spatial uh, arrangement, which is the shape of the atoms. And also the uh, medicines for curing disease or uh, those are related to how the molecules interact with the protein, uh, with the protein molecules inside our body. And the, with the molecular geometry, the shape, we can predict the molecule is it polar or nonpolar. And polar, nonpolar uh, has a lot to do with the, such as uh, solubility, how a molecular compound, soluble or not soluble uh, in water or in some other solvent such as uh, gasoline. Uh, these are, when they use a solvent, the solubility can be predicted by the molecular polarity. And so the compound, we've seen the ionic compound made of ions and there are many other compounds as well. So for example, the uh, table sugar, uh, table sugar has um, so many carbons, hydrogen, oxygen. Uh, it looks like white crystal, soluble in water. And <clears throat> the white crystal, soluble in water, is very similar to the table salt. Table salt feels the same. But the difference is uh, table sugar, it tastes different from the table salt dissolved in water. And also, these two compounds, uh, when testing the conductivity, the electric conductivity, table sugar solution will not conduct electricity because it emits, it emits no ions in the solution. Uh, whereas table salt has numerous ions and ions can move under electric field and it can conduct electricity. And you can see there, there's some other uh, compounds. This is a butane, which is in the, um, the lighter. <clears throat> that one we can buy from the store has a trigger to make a lighter, make a light of a candle and uh, or gas. And it's a colorless liquid, volatile, um, in salt, insoluble in water. And also easy to catch fire. And some other compounds, glycerol, it has uh, oxygen, has carbon, hydrogen, uh, is a liquid, is colorless liquid, but not volatile. A little change in the, in the structure, uh, a couple of changes in the atom, it made a completely different physical chemical properties. And the glycerols or taste sweet, very different from the butane that they use for uh, light up gas. So what makes them different? It is bonding have a completely different nature. The bonding theory is basically explaining how does atoms uh, share or gain or lose electrons to form bond. 
and the chemical bonding uh, in the covalent bonding, uh, it can help predict the shape of the molecule and can predict uh, shape of the molecule, does the molecule soluble or not soluble in water, and the volatility uh, is that it easy to evaporate into gas or, uh, or not? Uh, is it easy to melt and so forth? This can be predicted by the chemical bonding. And uh, it can be used for, in the industry, pharmaceutical companies uh, can use to uh, knowledge to design a molecule to cure disease, treat disease. Uh, so for example, the, uh, the first uh, protein structure based is basically completely designed by chemists and uh, biologists, biochemists. It is to use the um, treat the AIDS virus. Treat the AIDS <clears throat> That's one of the first drugs designed by the chemist based on the shape of the uh, molecule in the HIV virus and design the molecule to, uh, to work on that, to attack that. And so the theory, the very basic model in the chemical bonding theory is a Lewis bonding theory. It is the, um, Lewis is the chemist that proposed use a dot to represent valence electrons for each atom. And so his main idea is um, the atoms by giving or taking or sharing uh, reach noble gas configuration, which have uh, eight electrons. And since uh, the atom become stable with eight electrons in the outermost shell, uh, we, we call it octet rule, oct means eight. There are some exceptions. When the atoms are very small, has very few valence electrons, uh, they cannot reach eight. And so those are the exceptions, uh, hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium. Uh, all these four atoms, when they become stable, uh, it is they tend to become like a helium because helium has only two valence electrons. Uh, that's because it has only one valence shell, the 1s subshell. And 1s subshell has only two electrons. And so the others, hydrogen tend to become helium, uh, they become two. Lithium lose one electron, become two. Beryllium lose two, becomes uh, two. So those are the exceptions for uh, octet rule. And the loose symbol for the atoms, um, it looks very simple. You start from the symbol of the element and put the um, valence electrons around those symbol. And since we have a up and down, left and right, four directions, we pull those electrons around the four directions. And so lithium one electrons, beryllium two. Uh, there's no particular reason why should I put a dot uh, individually on each direction or uh, put them paired together? There's no particular reason. You can write any way you like. You can pair them together and leave one, one dot. So it actually doesn't matter. Uh, we normally do not discuss how each atom with valence electrons. Uh, Lewis symbol of atoms more useful in the compounds and especially covalent compound. So nitrogen will have five electrons. You can see that uh, they start sharing, pairing. Uh, and oxygen six, neon finally become noble gas, have eight electrons. So two in each direction. We have eight, four pairs. And in the same group, in the same family, you can see the, uh, in the lower third row in the period table. And we have uh, basically exactly the same pattern. Sodium is the same family as lithium. So they have the same number of valence electrons and so forth, all the other same. So these are the electron dot structure for the atoms. Each atom has been neutral. And so, so far only the neon and argon are the octet. Each have eight electrons. <coughs> So 
So the covalent bonding are the uh, nonmetal uh, nonmetal atoms share electrons to form chemical bonding. And there are many compounds like this, such as uh, water, carbon dioxide, and many, many others. Uh, the molecules in our body, for example, uh, there are many, many big molecules, are the proteins in our muscle, uh, in the saliva, which have an enzyme that is supposed to break down the food. And most molecules in our body are actually the covalent bonding. And so the nonmetals share share their valence electrons to form chemical bond. And this class will show you how they share. So this is the uh, bonding between hydrogen and oxygen in water molecules. And so the uh, hydrogen has only one valence electron, only one valence electron. And the oxygen have a six, have eight electrons total, but have only six valence electrons. Those valence electrons in the second shell, the outer shell. So the oxygen um, is not octet. To become octet, uh, the hydrogen will share with oxygen. So now the, uh, between oxygen and the hydrogen, there are two electrons shared in between. By doing that, oxygen now you have seven valence electrons because six plus one shared. Uh, to achieve a final octet, hydrogen, uh, oxygen need to form another sharing with the uh, different hydrogen, with the second hydrogen. So in the end, uh, the oxygen will have a eighth valence electron in the outermost shell. You can see that those are the outermost electrons. There are eight of them become like a noble gas neon. And at the same time, the hydrogen through sharing, now it gained one because of sharing. Hydrogen become like a helium. It also becomes stable. So this is how does the um, nonmetals through sharing electrons uh, reach octet or stable noble gas configuration. Uh, the covalent bond also exists in elements, not only in compounds. And there are seven elements in the periodic table uh, that are diatomic. Two atoms in one molecule. And those seven uh, elements are uh, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Those seven elements through sharing electrons between the two atoms reach octet. So later we'll show you how they become octet uh, because each have a different situation uh, from the others. And these seven in the future, um, we're supposed to know, to memorize, how to help yourself memorize. The hydrogen, it is uh, singled out on the left in the periodic table. The other six, um, it looks like a form a figure seven in the periodic table because their location in the periodic table. So nitrogen is a group five and oxygen is group six, fluorine group seven. And in the group seven, there are four, um, all the halogens are diatomic. All the halogens are diatomic. And uh, so these are the, uh, there are seven elements and it looks like a figure seven. So this is some, some of the book called this rule of sevens because in the period table, it looks like a figure seven. And there are seven elements, including hydrogen. Uh, so for example, chlorine has a very faint yellow greenish color. It's a greenish color gas at the room temperature. Uh, the molecular elements in the period table lay out, this is a hydrogen left alone on the group 1A, on the top of the group 1A. And the other six are together. Nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. So these are 
six more here plus one hydrogen. Uh, the nonmetals form compound form the molecular compound. Molecular compounds because uh, when the compound in the solid state, it is made of uh, molecules. This is very different from the ionic compound. Ionic com uh, compound, as you remember in the last chapter, is made of individual ions. And the uh, ionic compound is made of a cation and ion ion stacked together. Every cation surrounded by the anions. Cation surrounded by the anions. And the uh, anion surrounded by the cations through the attractive force. And the molecular compound is made of uh, whole molecules. Each molecule is neutral, a neutral molecule. So for example, this is shows you a dry ice. The dry ice have, um, it is pure carbon dioxide. It is made of a carbon dioxide molecule. So this molecule looks like a three atom together. In the middle is carbon and there are two oxygens on both ends. And so these are the molecular compounds. There are quite a few more molecular compounds. The water is made of molecular compound. Ammonia in the Windex. Uh, ammonia uh, is very good for deal with the grease in the cleaning. It's a molecular compound made of non-metal atoms. Table sugar is made of uh, uh, sugar molecules. It's very first, uh, in the very first slide, I show that there's animation of molecules rotating. That's a, a sugar molecule. It's covalent bonding. Uh, naming binary molecular compounds. Uh, as we've seen the last slide, molecular compounds, there's quite a few. Start from a simple uh, two elements compound, such as water, carbon dioxide to a sugar molecule, have a 30, 40 uh, uh, atoms, three elements in the sugar. Uh, the naming for the molecular compound or covalent compound. By, by the way, molecular compound and covalent compound in our class is the same, we consider the same. Molecular compound and covalent compound is the same. The uh, compound with more than two elements are complicated, and we will not be deal with uh, will not be dealing with the naming of such compound. We'll focus on the binary means uh, the covalent compound has only two elements, two elements, binary. It doesn't mean have only two atoms. It can be more than two atoms, but has only two elements. The compound naming with a binary um, molecular compound is fairly easy. It's much easier than ionic compound. Okay, the ionic compound, as we go through the last chapter, there's lots of memorizations required. And uh, for the metal, uh, most of them, we need to find out the charge. Uh, because their charge is variable, and we need to memorize those polyatomic ions. Uh, all the anions in the PER table, we need to memorize because they are always the same charge uh, based on the location in the PER table. Uh, but for binary molecular compounds, naming is very, very simple. And so the uh, namings start from the left to right. We name the first one in the to the left uh, of the formula. First element. The first element um, we use uh, just name of the element. So, for example, carbon is the name of that element with the atomic number as a six. And in the compound, we still call it carbon. Uh, we have a CO two molecules. Just full name the element. The second element in the formula. Okay. The second element to the right in the formula, uh, we treat that same as, uh, as if it is a, a ion in the ionic compound. And so the second element, we end with IDE, just like uh, the anions, monatomic anions 
in ionic compound. And so that's basically how we uh, named that. Okay, so this is a, a very simple layout. First, just name. Second, uh, we turn the end to IDE. Uh, what if the there are more than one atoms? More than one atoms uh, in one formula. We use a prefix. The prefix are the way we show the numbers, how many items uh, in the composition. And the prefix, um, we start from mono and the diatri and so forth. The only uh, rule is for the first, first element in the formula, if there's only one atom in the formula, we do not use mono. So for example, uh, anyone know how to name this compound, right, you guys? Can anyone tell me what is the name for the compound? This is not a trick question, by the way. We talk about it all the time, the global warming. What is the name for the compound? Can anyone help me out? Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. See, there's only one carbon in the molecule but we do not add a model. Okay, so the first nonmetal, if there's only one atom in the formula, we do not add a model. That's only uh, exception to the uh, prefix rule. Okay, this is only exception to the prefix rule. Otherwise, um, here, the oxygen there too, we use di. And by the way, everyone should know this compound as well. This is a close relative to the carbon dioxide. But this molecule is not so nice. It's very actually very toxic. And this compound we call it carbon monoxide, second nonmetal in the formula. Uh, we use all the prefix, start from mono all the way to as many as we need it. So this compound we call it carbon monoxide because it's only one oxygen. So first nonmetal, we do not use mono. Otherwise, use a prefix all the way. And so that's, uh, so what are the prefixes? Um, many, many of those are actually very familiar. Uh, mono for one, like the game Monopoly. Uh, two use die, three is try, tripod. Uh, four is Tetra. There's a game, Tetris, one of the very first um, uh, computer games. Tetris, the Russian Tetris. Uh, five is Penta. Hexa for six. Hepta for seven. And then the Octa for eight, Octopus. That's very Octa. Nine is Nona. Oh, nine, we didn't, I did not have in this formula. The reason because um, uh, the element very rare have uh, nine atoms in the binary covalent compound. Uh, but nine, if you, uh, in the future, you see the nona actually means nine. And 10, uh, we do use 10. Some formula we use 10 to describe how many atoms. 10 atoms, it is a deca. Uh, the <clears throat> decade means 10. Deci is one tenth, so 10, it is actually the deca. That's the prefixes we use if the formula has a um, certain number of atoms. So there's a little, um, there's a little bylaw minor rules. If the uh, prefix, it is followed by a element that a star with a vowel, star with a vowel, then we drop the A from those prefixes. We drop the A. And so the example will be the carbon monoxide. Okay, carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide name, it is simply carbon. Uh, we're supposed to mono, 
the uh, uh, next is oxide, start with O. Uh, we drop one of the O. So carbon monoxide, it is just the uh, single O. It means one oxygen. So let's say we have another one. We have a compound like um, This compound name will be dinitrogen, and the next is the uh, four oxygen. Four oxygen, we're supposed to use tetra oxide, but oxide start with a vowel O, so we dropped A. Uh, instead of a tetra -a oxide, we just simply use tetroxide. So that's what it means. If the uh, prefix followed by a named nonmetal uh, that start with a vowel, we drop A. Uh, actually, there's only one element start with um, um, start with a vowel that is uh, oxygen. Okay. All the other nonmetals are started with um, the consonants. And tens deca. So that's uh, prefixes. Uh, we need to memorize those. And I think most of you in uh, elementary school, when you study the uh, polygons, different shapes, you've probably seen that already. So this is actually not very new. The, these actually relate to the calendar, uh, October, November, and December. And actually, even hepta uh, is related to September. But these three are the obviously related to the calendar in that sequence. Uh, there's some exceptions when we name the molecular compound. The reason because um, some compound we start to call by a name uh, without knowing the elements for thousands of years. And uh, so we, we always, always call that compound a certain name, such as water. Uh, the water, according to our system, the naming should be dihydrogen monoxide. But of course, no one called that. And there's a, a number of other compounds. Uh, and H3, we call this ammonia. So by the way, these names we should memorize. Uh, we use it every day or either in the uh, food or drink or um, cleaning agent. Ammonia is in the cleaning agent. And this compound, if we name by the IUPAC system, the one we just learned the system prefix, it should be the nitrogen trihydride, trihydride. And the H2S, between hydrogen and sulfur, there's only one compound existing. And therefore, we do not use uh, those mono di tri to name that. Uh, so we do not call this dihydrogens monosulfide. Okay, because there's only one comp compound between sulfur, hydrogen, hydrogen sulfide. This is stinking uh, rotten egg smell. It's not very uncommon because if there's a organic matter such as food and the star rotting uh, without oxygen, it produces hydrogen sulfide. It's toxic gas, especially in the sewer. Uh, this one, the hydrogen chlorine, again, there's only one compound between hydrogen and chlorine. And so this we just uh, simply call without a prefix, hydrogen chloride. And same is for the, all the other halogens. And the C4 uh, is a gas um, human known for a long time and it's an organic compound. And this we just call the methane instead of uh, carbon tetrahydride. We do not call it, call it carbon tetrahydride, it's just methane. Uh, we need to memorize this compound, methane. This methane is about 90% of a natural gas. So we use this gas every day for heating, hot water heater, um, gas stove. And you can, on the street, you can see the NGV nitro gas vehicle to use methane gas. 
And then last one is uh, hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide we can find from the store. Um, fairly inexpensive for cleaning. And it's, it can handle some minor cleaning and antiseptic. Uh, the name of this compound, uh, according to the system, it should be dihydrogen dioxide. But instead, we just call it hydrogen peroxide. The peroxide, it means uh, in the structure, the oxygen bound together. When you have a oxygen have a bond in between and bond with some other atoms, this bond is a peroxide bond. Fairly unstable. It can uh, break apart, can react with the other matters. So these are the compound. We have the common name uh, instead of using the prefix. So some examples for naming compounds. When we name the compound, since we learn about the naming uh, any compound. Now we need to be more careful. We have to think, what kind, what kind of compound are we naming? Is this compound covalent compound or ionic compound? If you see the two elements in the formula, both are nonmetals, then it is covalent and we use a prefix to name unless there's some common uh, exceptions, such as water and so forth. If you see a formula um, start with a metal and followed by a non-metal, the naming system will be the ionic bonding. And uh, we use the last chapter, um, the way to name the compound. So apparently, uh, these are common exceptions. The example I show here, they are none of those. And the both are made of non-metals. So both are molecular compounds. And then uh, once we realize it is covalent, then we just use a prefix. Uh, the first element, we just call the name of the element without changing. Add the prefix if necessary. Second nonmetal, we change the end to IDE. And the way we change to IDE, uh, it is just like what we learned from last chapter. A single nonmetal turn into anion. We just change the IDE. And so the first nonmetal, we do not use model. So that is, be careful. Uh, and then the, we dropped A if the last one. The last one is we dropped A if the prefix is followed by a nonmetal uh, that start with a vowel. So the first one, um, there are two nitrogen and four oxygen. It's simply dinitrogen and tetroxide. We dropped A. The second compound is the BF3. BF3, the first element is just boron. And uh, even though it's a single nonmetal, we do not use mono because that's the first nonmetal. Uh, the second nonmetal is the F, F3. F3. There are three of them, so just add a try. Again, fluoride fluoride has a flu. Has a flu. You first. Try fluoride. So that's the naming for the molecular or covalent compound. Fairly straightforward. Uh, so these are which we'll is quite quickly go over the naming. This is sulfur and this is fluorine. And this is, it is a uh, molecular compound because both are nonmetals. And we just call it a sulfur tetroxide. The, uh, uh, again, oh, there's a big typo here. Oh my goodness. This is not tetroxide, tetrafluoride. 
tetrafluoride. And next one, uh, there are two iodine. Uh, two iodine, and it's a covalent compound. So this dye. Uh, the next one is iodine. Start with I. As a convention, we keep both. Keep both. <clears throat> By iodine, and then the seven we use uh, hepta. So hep, hepta. Um, the nonmetal in the end is the O. The prefix is followed by a uh, nonmetal star of the vowel. We drop the A. So we do not have the A, we just uh, have toxide. And by the way, this name, um, very interesting. You can see the, we keep both I. This is very rare in English. Perhaps the only way we can see that is Hawaii, is because of language. And so you can see the, uh, this is kind of like a proof that chemistry is a different language. Even though it is English, it has different language. And so, uh, if someone claim to have learned, claim have learned chemistry, well, have you really learned chemistry or intro chem? Let's do a test. Ask the students, ask this person, can you pronounce this word for me? Uh, just this word. Most people will not know how to deal with it. But if you learn chemistry, it pronounced as diiodine. Okay, so this is kind of a test you can do. Is it really, does the really person learn about the enough chemistry? Is ask some questions in uh, only chemists know how to handle, such as the diiodine. Uh, and then we can do a few more practice. This is the uh, P4010. Both are non metals and none of the common exceptions. Uh, so just uh, this will be the tetra. Do I have an answer for those? I might have those. Oh, there we go. Have those. Tetraphosphorus. And the uh, uh, 10, we are supposed to use deca. Again, the last nonmetal start with the O. So we drop the A. Uh, just dec. And we drop the A. Just add the oxide, the coxide. Means 10 oxygens. And the uh, last compound, C3S5. Uh, three, use tri. For five, we use a penta. And so that's, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, the molecular compound or ionic compound, to name or to write a formula, uh, both fairly straightforward. The uh, writing formula, let me add a few more comments. If you start from a name and to write formula, uh, just remember the naming, the, the meaning of those prefixes, then to write formula is pretty straightforward. Uh, let's say uh, we're supposed to write a formula, the hexa, Hexacarbon uh, carbon. This is a made up compound. Hexacarbon uh, nona chloride. What should be the formula? Hex carbon. That means how many carbon? Six. Six, okay, very good. Uh, and then the nona chloride. Nine. 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 Yes. Yep, so that's the formula. It's a made up formula, but it's easy to translate the, uh, the prefix into numbers and it put as a subscript and that will be the formula for the compound, very easy. Uh, the naming, 
uh, start from formula, make a name. That is, you have to think uh, what prefix to pick. Uh, but once you're familiar with the prefix, uh, which is actually very easy to come up with the formatter or naming, both are very easy. Uh, so don't be confused with the last chapter. The last chapter on any compound, it seems like a much, much more demanding and complicated. So this Friday, we'll do more practice on those. Uh, but that's the main focus in the uh, naming. Covalent compound or ionic compound, the uh, uh, molecular compound, fairly easy to name or write formulas. Uh, so the main focus of this chapter is still deal with the bonding. They describe the bonding, how they share electrons. It can help us predict the shape and also predict the uh, physical properties and chemical properties. Um, so the Lewis structure or Lewis structure of the compounds, it explains how the atoms share electrons to become octet. And uh, the sharing electrons start from the, uh, the simplest, will be two atoms share only one pair of electrons, share one pair of electrons, uh, one pair, of course, two electrons. So the example are the first fluorine, which is the element. It's made of two fluorine atoms. And so let's see, the fluorine atom, how they form bond. <clears throat> we start from the uh, Lewis dot symbol for the fluorine atom. Fluorine is group seven. So uh, 7A, it has seven valence electrons. two fluorine to form the bond is the fluorine I use a different symbol for the, for the electrons for the second fluorine atom the second fluorine also have seven so when these two fluorine atoms share only uh, one pair of electrons and you can see uh, for this fluorine now it have eight electrons, become like a neon, the noble gas configuration. For the other fluorine, same thing happened. So by sharing, both atom, both fluorine atom, achieve octet and become stable. Uh, because both become uh, eight. <coughs> so this is similar, uh, such as, um, the two strangers, they decide to share the one house, share one room. Uh, when they share one room to satisfy, satisfy each one's need, they need to share bathroom, need to share kitchen, need to share um, dining table, for example. Uh, by sharing, they satisfy both needs. So that's the uh, atoms share only one pair of electrons. Water molecule is very similar. Water molecule, uh, the oxygen have uh, six valence electrons because it is group six. So for oxygen become octet, it will need uh, two more electrons becomes octet, becomes noble gas. And so to, to achieve that, it need a one hydrogen to share with this oxygen. Uh, well, you can see this oxygen now we have a seven, still not octet. So we need a second hydrogen to share its dot, the electron. And after sharing, you can see the oxygen becomes eight. And a hydrogen atom now have two electrons become like a helium, which is noble gas. So by sharing uh, between two atoms share one pair, uh, with two hydrogen, the oxygen becomes stable. All the atom becomes noble gas configuration. 
So this is how the atom share one pair of electrons to become noble gas, or we call it octet. What if two atoms share electrons? After sharing one pair, that still not make octet. Then they can share more pair of electrons. And that's what happened with the, um, the O2 molecules. As you remember, we have seven nonmetals uh, that are existing as a diatomic elements, uh, which means that in one molecule, they form molecules. And each molecule have two atoms, diatomic. O2 is a diatomic molecule. So how come the O2 with each with six electrons become eight? It is, uh, let's show the so the whole process. Okay, the first oxygen have a uh, six valence electrons. Second oxygen have um, also six. After sharing one pair of electrons, and you can see both oxygen have seven electrons, and that's not octet, not a noble gas. To uh, finally become a noble gas, they need to share one more pairs. So in the end, it becomes, they both oxygen electrons, which was unpaired before. Now they all comes between the two oxygen atoms. And same thing happened with the other oxygen. And you can see, uh, I have to share two pairs of electrons, which is uh, which is four electrons. This oxygen now becomes eight octet, and the second oxygen, same thing, becomes eight. So by sharing two pairs of electrons, two oxygen atoms can form a molecule, and each oxygen becomes noble gas configuration. Uh, what if for the others, yes, they can actually share even more than two pairs, share three pairs. That happens for the nitrogen gas. The N2 um, as a gas, as an element, it is about 80% of the uh, normal air that we breathe. So the N2 is very abundant on the Earth's atmosphere. And N2 molecule is made of two nitrogen atoms. Each nitrogen atom, because they are uh, in group five, it has five valence electrons. So for two nitrogen atoms to come together, uh, form noble gas configuration, they will need to share three pairs. And the three pairs, it looks like this. Each one atom share their uh, three electrons. This is not shared, but you have three shared. The other nitrogen also share the matching, share the matching three electrons. And after share the three pairs, this nitrogen becomes eight. And this nitrogen also becomes eight. So both becomes stable. I have to share three pairs of electrons. Uh, so in the loose structure, as good a practice, um, we need to kind of see, uh, be able to know when you see a Lewis structure or uh, we are building a Lewis structure ourselves. Is this Lewis structure with all the atoms being octet? And so this is a little practice. Uh, basically, we look around each symbol, uh, each nonmetal, and make sure each atom have uh, eight electrons around. So let's start from the first uh, fluorine. The first fluorine, you can see there are up and down, left and right, there are four pairs of dots. So is this fluorine octet? 
does the fluorine atom have eight electrons around? Yes. Yes. So yeah. this is octet. Very good, octet. Uh, so now the next second one. Second one. This carbon. Is this carbon octet? The no. box, rectangle. Hmm. Yes. There's two here, two more, and four more. That's total eight. That's also octet. Uh, this is actually shared two pairs. So they're sharing four electrons here, plus uh, two other pairs. Together is four pairs. That's eight. That is octet. Okay, uh, how about this carbon? So when you look at this carbon, let me change the colors, make it easier to, to uh, this carbon. All around. Is this octet? Yeah. It is, it is octet. Uh, how about hydrogen? We look at those uh, um, fluorine, carbon, carbon. What about the hydrogen? This hydrogen is no. two electrons. Uh, actually, it's not octet, but hydrogen, remember, is an exception. It should uh, eventually reach become a helium, uh, have only two electrons. The reason because hydrogen is such a small atom, it has only one, um, one shell shell number one, and therefore there's only one subshell, the one S, and one S maximum, only two electrons. So hydrogen, uh, to fulfill the one S become a helium, it is it reaches the uh, stable configuration. And hydrogen with two electrons already stable. It's not quite octet. We should call it a duet because two, uh, but nobody bothered add another rule for hydrogen. It is hydrogen becomes stable. It becomes helium. Uh, so hydrogen, it is a stable. All the three hydrogen atoms are stable in this structure. So this whole structure is all the atoms um, fulfill the octet rule. It's good. It's all good to go. Okay, let's look at the second uh, formula. Second formula, the fluorine. How's the fluorine? Fluorine, by the way, is this octet? Uh, is this fluorine octet? Yeah. 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 Okay, good. Uh, how about this carbon? No. No, because? It's six. It's only six. It's not octet. Uh, how about the, the next carbon? Yes. This one is eight. Um, <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. So, um, hydrogen is same. Hydrogen is same situation. It's a as the, the left. And so the whole structure you have a you have a carbon that's not octet. So to um, make this molecule the right hand molecule stable, we need to make this carbon share the pair of electron. Move this pair of electron between the two carbons. And that way, the uh, both carbon become octet, uh, which is exactly what happened in the first molecule, the left-hand molecule. Uh, so to be able to differentiate, to observe, find out octet, that is the, uh, before you start finally work on the Lewis structure. Uh, so that's how we observe and decide to see if this octet. And so in the Lewis structure, we have a terminology to describe the different kind of electrons in the Lewis structure. Uh, first one we call the bonding pairs. Bonding pairs are the electrons, valence electrons, shared between the atoms. Because uh, the bonding that help the two atoms together the long pairs. Long pairs 
that means the uh, valence electrons in the Lewis structure that is not being shared by the two atoms. And so this is the example, the uh, carbon dioxide, uh, which is the actual Lewis structure for carbon dioxide. And you can see the, uh, the bonding pairs. The bonding pairs are the electrons between the atoms. This is one bonding pair. Uh, actually, two bonding pairs. And here's another two bonding pairs. These are bonding pairs. The long pairs. These are the long pairs. It's very simple. Long pairs. <clears throat> So if I ask question, uh, how many long pairs on oxygen? Okay, how many long pairs? Um, you can see it with this blue structure, each oxygen have two long pairs. Um, and notice this is actually the uh, non plural single form. So on the oxygen atom, uh, each oxygen, there are, there are two long pairs. And the bonding pairs, there are a total four bonding pairs in this entire molecule. Four bonding pairs, eight electrons being shared between the atoms. The long pairs and bonding pairs uh, in the future, it affect the shape of the molecule. And so we need to differentiate these two. Uh, the covalent bonding, not only in the compound, also in the polyatomic ions. Uh, the polyatomic ions we learned in the last chapter. And each polyatomic ion has a fixed, has the uh, same charge. And this is the example shows you the um, nitrate ion. Nitrate ion, NO3, with a one negative charge. There are bonding between the nitrogen and oxygen, which is covalent bonding. And so that's the uh, shared electron between the nonmetals. And together, they carry a negative charge. And same as the cations. Ammonium ion, it is made of a, one nitrogen uh, and four hydrogen atoms. And between nitrogen and hydrogen is a covalent bonding because both are nonmetals. Uh, then between the ions, if I look at the formula ammonium sulfate, the ammonium sulfate between the two ions, it is electrostatic attraction, attractive force between the opposite charge. That is ionic, ionic bonding. Within the molecules themselves, within the ammonium ion or within the sulfate ion, their covalent bonding. And so this is how the actual sulfate ion looks like. It's a tetrahedra shape. Ammonium ion also have the same similar shape. The geometry is very similar. And so the common bonding patterns depending on how many valence electrons on the atom, uh, each nonmetal will need a different number of uh, more electrons to share and to reach octet. The carbon has a four valence electrons, so need to share four more. Uh, so the bonding for the normal carbon is uh, four bonds. And, uh, and there are no long pairs. To achieve four bonds, there are different ways. It can be four single bond or two double bond. Okay, each double bond is two bonds. So two double means four. Or it can be one single bond with uh, one triple bond, one plus three, that'll make it four bonds. Or it can be two single and uh, one double, because double means two bonds, so together four bonds. There are different ways to get there. Uh, there's no need to memorize the uh, 
the different ways for a carbon to achieve four bonds. But remember, carbon need a four bonds because it has only four electrons. Need a four more to, uh, to achieve eight. Nitrogen is group five, so need three more electrons to become octet. And uh, so we need a three bonds. Uh, with three bonds, it can have a different combinations. It can be uh, three single, or one double and one single. Or have a one triple bond, like in the N2 molecule. So these are different possibilities. Uh, oxygen have six valence electrons, so need four more to become octet. And it uh, need to share two more from other atoms, so form two bonds. And the two bond can be two single bond or one double bond. Uh, after the rich octet, uh, both nitrogen and oxygen, they will end up have some long pair electrons. Nitrogen will have one long pair. Uh, that's the uh, nitrogen, what after bonding looks like. You have three bond and one long pair. So together it's octet. Because each line, each bond have two electrons. So become eight. Oxygens form two bonds. After two bonds, there are two pairs. So two long pairs. Okay, and then finally the hydrogen. Hydrogen has only one electron need one more to become helium, so it'll form a single bond. Halogen are the um, group seven elements. Uh, they have only, they have uh, seven valence electrons. So they will share more, one more, from the other nonmetal becomes a noble gas. And so those uh, average sharing one electron form one bond, and there are three long pairs. These halogens, each atom in the bonding will have a three long pair electrons. Uh, there's a few exceptions. The next one, beryllium and boron. Uh, these are exceptions we don't need to know for our class. Once getting to the Chem 1A, you'll be relearning and to uh, spend more time on those exceptions. We focus on only the, these four elements. These four elements plus the halogens. And so with each nonmetal have a very specific number of electrons uh, to share and reach octet. Uh, there's one way to memorize the how many bond for each element nonmetal to form to reach octet. And that rule is, um, how does this sounds like, by the way? Can anyone try to pronounce it? H-O-N-C? It's honk, like the car honk. Honk rule. The honk rule, um, this H-O-N-C, each represent the four elements. H it means uh, hydrogen and as well as a halogen. Okay, by the way, halogen. Because both start with uh, H. Both halogen and hydrogen represent uh, with H. They, they all need to share one more electrons or form one bond to become octet. Okay, uh, the oxygen. How many bonds for oxygen atom to form to reach octet? Can anyone remember that from the last slide? Two. Two bonds, yes. Because oxygen have six electrons, need two more, become eight. Um, how about nitrogen? Three. Nitrogen, five electrons. Three, five valence electrons need three more to become eight. And one, two, three. Well, could take a guess. What about carbon? One, two, three. Next one's four. Uh, carbon has four valence electrons. Need to share four more. So four bond. Hunk means uh, for these five, uh, 
five elements or five groups of elements. The number bounding for each it is uh, one, two, three, four bounds. This common bounding pattern is very useful for this chapter when we discuss the uh, how the atom form bound become octet. Uh, it becomes much more convenient to decide instead of counting electrons that makes each one octet. Well, remember carbon should have four bounds, and one way or the other form four bounds. And these are only the four elements. Um, halogens is actually a whole family, uh, but for especially the oxygen. Uh, in the same family as oxygen, there are sulfur and selenium in the lower part in the periodic table. And same as with nitrogen, there a, they have families. Uh, it turned out those families, very similar. Um, sulfur normally form two bonds. And selenium normally is two bonds as well. Uh, and phosphorus normally three bonds. Uh, arsenic, likewise. Well, I put the question mark because um, they tend to have some exceptions. So there are mostly two bonds for sulfur, but sometimes they have more than two bonds. There's quite a few examples. But the Hong rule, I think the, uh, we focus on these four elements and one family, the halogen, the Hong rule. Uh, so when you include the lower part in the period table, we can call this extended, extended Hong rule. Silicon, for example, the uh, mostly form four bonds, has a few exceptions, more than four bonds. Most of it is four bonds. So once we know the uh, Hong crew valence electrons, uh, we can draw the Lewis structures for many covalent compounds. For many covalent compounds. Uh, so the steps to draw Lewis structures <clears throat> It has about a four or five steps. So today I just started covering those steps. Uh, we might have one example to use those steps. And next week we'll practice more on the on those steps, how to draw those structures. Uh, when you are given, when you have a covalent compound uh, or any molecules or ions with uh, covalent bonding, with made of non-metals. Uh, first step, we calculate the total number of valence electrons. You basically add all the valence electrons in the whole formula together. Total, and then valence electrons. And uh, so we use the, uh, the group number, because group number, it equals number of valence electrons. So we use group number to draw the Lewis structures. That's our first step. And second step, we link the atoms with a single bond. To begin with, to draw the Lewis structure, we start with single bond linking those atoms. Well, when the molecule has more than two elements, more than two atoms, uh, there's some atom that has to stay on the center, center of the molecule, and some atom cannot stay on the center. How do we know which atom to put on center? Use a Hank rule. Hank rule, remember Hank rule means hydrogen or halogen, one bond, oxygen two, nitrogen three, carbon four. The more bond one atom uh, can form, uh, that atom tend to be on the center. So uh, if the formula has carbon, then carbon is most likely to be the center. If a formula have no carbon but have a nitrogen, then nitrogen is the center because nitrogen can, can form three bonds per one atom. So we use Hong Kru, um, uh, arrange those atoms, put into the space out, and link the atoms have uh, with a single bond. Single bond has one pair of electrons. Okay, 
So that's the hung crew and lay out the single bond. And the next step, we uh, we start with the total number of valence electrons, sum of all the valence electrons. So we have number. And uh, step two, we use some of those electrons to build a single bond. So we still have, we might still have a, a number of valence electrons remaining. Then we uh, distribute those valence electrons on the uh, start from the terminal atoms, the atoms on the outermost first to reach octet. On the outside atoms to make the octet first. Uh, so let's say I use example that'll make it less abstract. Let's say we have a CH2O, this molecule. This molecule to draw the Lewis structure, we start with the counting valence electrons. Carbon is group four. Group four have four electrons each. Hydrogen is group one. So one electron each. There are two hydrogens, so one times two. There are two valence electrons come from two hydrogen atoms in this formula. And the oxygen is group six, so plus six. All these electrons add together, uh, that'll give me that'll give me 12. So step one, with this formula, I count as I have a 12 valence electrons. Okay. Step two, uh, we arrange atoms linked with single bond and uh, follow the Hunk rule, the Hunk rule. And if you look at our formula, we have a carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Which atom is most likely to be the center? Is carbon or hydrogen or oxygen with this formula? We have a carbon and then we have oxygen. And then you can see the Hunk group. Uh, carbon should have four bonds. So between carbon and oxygen, even though both can form more than one bond, carbon is better in the center. So we put a carbon in the center. Oxygen here. And then we need to decide we have two hydrogens. Uh, the two hydrogen atoms, where should I put? The carbon should have four bonds. So with two hydrogen, at least one should be on this carbon because carbon needed more bonds. Well, we have one more hydrogen. This so last hydrogen can either go with oxygen or go with this carbon. Uh, well, oxygen need only two bonds to become octet. Carbon need four. So it is safer it is safer to put the last hydrogen on the atom that is most demanding, okay, because the carbon needs four bonds. Uh, link with single bond first. So step two, that's what we get, step two. And now step three. Step three, uh, let me draw the structure again and, uh, and do the step three. Step three is, attach atoms with remaining beta electrons. Remaining beta electrons. Uh, in the beginning step one, we count there are 12 beta electrons. We start with 12 beta electrons. And if you look at this Lewis structure, there are three bonds, three single bonds has already been laid out. Three single bond, each bond has uh, two electrons. So there are six electrons. Those six electrons has been used. It is part of the 12. So how many electrons remaining? It is 12 minus the electrons that has already been used for bonding, which is six. So the remaining electrons, six. I have six more electrons left. It's almost like um, I have a whole bunch of cash and I want to buy certain things. And uh, I already spent some money. And then the rest, I need to decide what to do with the remaining money. And there's, um, we already spend six electrons here. And we have 12 electrons to spend. 
we decide to fill around to use all the cache around those atoms. Okay, so that's where the rule uh, says start with terminal atoms. Okay, in this layout, the oxygen is terminal, it's outside atoms. Hydrogen is also outside. So these we call them terminal atoms. Uh, terminal, terminal is a word has multiple meanings. One of the meaning is in the uh, airport. Some of you did some air traveling. Have you heard about what a terminal means in the airport? Terminal, anyone? What does terminal mean in the airport? The uh, end? The end, yes. The end is, <laughs> if you look space, okay. The airport, if you look space, if you take a picture of the LAX, uh, actually, I don't remember what the LAX looks like, but uh, terminal actually means um, you have a, um, okay, let's say this is the uh, entrance of the main entrance airport, and you go to supposedly you have a hub. Each airliner occupy one hub. And you have other airliner have on the hub. This is a hub is where the all the passengers when they board a certain airline that stay together. And these are the terminals. These is terminals. Is where the actual air airplane people get aboard the airplane. These are terminals. So terminals are meaning the end, the, the end of the um, structure. And so uh, in the molecules, this is a hub, central atom is a hub. And the, those outside atoms are the terminals. So we have, uh, what are doing in step three is, uh, we have uh, remaining electrons. We need those, put those electrons around those atoms. So hopefully, all the atoms should become octet, but we have to do a step by step. Step three is we spend those six electrons around those terminal atoms to make each one octet. So um, with this structure, we have six electrons, and uh, hydrogen, hydrogen is a, a very small atom. Only need two electrons become stable. So this hydrogen do not need any more electrons. This is done. And likewise, this hydrogen, only this oxygen need more electron become octet. Okay, the oxygen so far has only one pair of electrons, which is two electrons. So the oxygen will need uh, six electrons more. So I put those six electrons around so that oxygen now become octet. And we are done with step three, okay. At this point, we had six electrons. Now all six electrons been spent on the oxygen. No more electrons left. So step three is done. Uh, but the, realize we, there's no more electrons left for the carbon. Step four, with the remaining electrons uh, being spent on all the atoms and with the um, terminal atom octet, we need to do one more step. Make sure all the atoms octet. Well, if you look at this structure, hydrogen is already uh, two, like a helium, they are good. They're stable. Oxygen's good, has eight electrons has the one pair between the carbon and oxygen and has six long pairs, that's eight electrons. What about a carbon? Is the carbon octet? No. Why? It has six. It has three bonds, that's only six electrons, it's not octet. Well, now I used up all the, <coughs> I don't have any electrons left. I'd use all the, or use up all the electrons, but there's one atoms unhappy. It has not reached octet. To make this atom octet, let's share the long pair from the oxygen with this carbon. 
and now becomes Now the shares is pair, this carbon become uh, four bonds. One double, two single becomes octet. And oxygen not be affected because oxygen still have eight electrons. It just um, one of the pair, long pair, now become shared. So this is kind of like, um, uh, let's say, the carbon is the uh, landlord, the carbon landlord. The oxygen is the renter. Uh, the renter, to begin with, the renter own the kitchen, and the landlord don't have kitchen. Oh, child. Okay, so this is all. Uh, so the to make both happy, the uh, the renter which who owns the kitchen shares kitchen, and it will not affect the ownership for the kitchen, but make the uh, landlord happy, which is not quite a good comparison, but. This is the uh, point how to draw the structures. 